Welcome to Soul Therapy's Black History Month presentation on black culture's influence on Korean hip hop. We first need to answer the question, what is Black History Month? Black History Month is an annual celebration and a time of acknowledgement of the black community's major impact on USA history. This comes from Negro History Week, which was turned into an official national event in 1976 by President Gerald Ford. And other black communities and diasporas across the world have also been inspired and now celebrate it as well. What is hip hop and how has African American culture arrived in Korea? First of all, hip hop refers to arts such as DJing, MCing, and dancing, as well as an African American cultural and community movement that started in the 1970s. It is a means of communication through the arts, as well as a way to spread awareness, create, have fun, organize, and socialize. Hip hop is definitely the trend of the past decade, and it's still going strong. African-American culture was introduced in Korea through Itaewon clubs where US GIs used to frequent, but also thanks to the popular b-boy scene that was also spread by US deployment. Ultimately, hip-hop in Korea took off with the PC community in 1997, along with the Asian financial crisis that saw Korean students studying abroad returning home as their parents faced financial issues. In consequence, there was an influx of American culture brought home by returning Koreans. Now, how did this change influence Korean hip-hop culture? Korean artists were heavily inspired by black artists, taking bits and pieces from what was being done in the USA to reproduce it in the form of beats, tones, and themes. This led to the popularization of hip-hop and other black music genres, which was, and sometimes still is, Koreanized black music. A few examples of Korean artists leading this new musical genre include So Taeji, the first icon of the mainstream scene Tiger JK, the K-hip-hop godfather Yoon Mi Rae, the K-hip-hop godmother and one of the few black artists MC Meta, the K-hip-hop underground boss Verbal Jint, bringing in new elements rhyme-wise The Quiet, who structured the scene and Jay Park, who helped it go global As Dumbfounded said, hip-hop culture was a creative outlet for Asian minorities and their youth to express themselves freely, to embrace their identity and to be themselves unapologetically. Hip-hop has taken over South Korea with a particular style, scene and artist that respond to their social reality. K-hip-hop and K-R&B artists have definitely been using black music and aesthetics and meanings as a way to create their own specific artworks. The scene and its artists help create a space for representation for Asian artists, uplifting them in their community. Hip hop allowed Korean artists to obtain recognition in the US scene, which is still very closed off to songs that aren't in English. Pioneers and actors of K-hip hop industries fostered a community of young talent sweeping the nation. Hip hop enabled artists to defy the social norms of Korean society. And Korean artists have also been more socially aware after coming across hip hop culture, and it sparks new conversations in Korea regarding colorism, cultural appropriation, racism, stereotypes, racial biases, mental health, peer or society's pressures, and showing off and many other topics. They've been able to spread awareness and mobilize educational resources. Examples of this new social awareness include Jay Park and Doki in The Most Hated, flexing and showing off a work hard and play hard mentality. Eternal Sunshine by Epic High, depicting mental health and its ties to societal pressures. Instagram by Dean, highlighting the stress and toxicity found in social media. Ohio by Crush and Knock by Zion T, both talks about the struggles and hardships that artists encounters on their way up. Nonetheless, we must address that this acceptance of hip-hop and black culture in the Korean hip-hop scene was not without its faults and has raised much controversy through the years. Let's take a look at the bad and the dirty. Questions around the authenticity of K-hip-hop and KR&B have always been raised, more especially by the black community both in the USA and in Korea, due to ignorance and lack of proper credits for black artists. The Korean music scene needs to start reflecting in on itself and its stance regarding racial discrimination. Korean audiences and artists have a hard enough time acknowledging issues within the artistic fields. The industry has a long-standing issue of cultural appropriation, inherent biases, anti-blackness and colorism that has been poorly or never addressed. The racism and ignorance has been evident, from rappers openly saying the N-word, blackfishing, pitting black and Asian communities against one another, blatant racism on social media to more controversial matters like working with problematic artists and cultural appropriation, hairstyles especially. The issue lies in the way that the global impact of black culture is portrayed. If they knew enough to stereotype a black person and make profit off the very essence of the black American community's arts, then they can and must learn to do better instead of indulging in their own ignorance. 
If hip hop was an outlet for them to express their Koreanness, to be confident as artists, if it was a ramp for them to be unapologetically who they are today, how can they leave the people that inspired them, the community it originated from, voiceless? Using and abusing visual elements in the name of trends with no understanding of their cultural and historical importance and meaning is not appreciation, neither is it being part of the culture. Appropriation is not appreciation, it's 21st century minstrelsy. It comes from a place of ignorance and is filled with stereotypes. However, times are slowly changing. The brutal murder of George Floyd led to a bunch of artists coming forward to spread awareness to their communities. K-hip hop artists like Dumbfounded or High Music were very proactive straight away. Others like DPR, Lee Young Ji or Miso, though they took weeks to do so, also spread awareness through their social media. Keep in mind, it is not just the artists to be blamed for this long withstanding issue. The industry is a business exchange. Thus, we must acknowledge the role of the fans. Fans play a huge part in the toxicity of the scene and its disregard for black fans and communities. Issues like cultural appropriation are not talked about as fans often turn a blind eye, shutting down any criticism regarding their favorite artist racist antics. This is a dangerous thing due to the fact that it encourages and promotes anti-blackness. Fan culture rewards, forgives, and never holds artists accountable for it. Not caring about how controversial artists are anymore, separating artists from their artworks is not cutting it anymore, and it's a very telling character move of stan culture. Not calling them out, holding them accountable, or deplatforming them is an issue, it's perpetuating the racist dynamics of the K-hip-hop industry. Black fans are often harassed, verbally abused, bullied, and even doxxed online if they express their discontent regarding some artists' actions. Some feel very conflicted about their enthusiasm for K-Hip-Hop and K-R&B for ethical reasons. How to keep engaging with an industry that is fundamentally hostile to who you are as a person. Black American arts and more especially hip-hop is at the very root of the beginning, the rise and the existence of K-Hip-Hop and K-R&B. The K-Hip-Hop scene is growing and evolving in both good and bad ways regarding its relations with black communities and other communities. Raising awareness, taking a stand and using one's platform is necessary, but it's a long process, especially with the controversial aspects of stand culture. Acknowledging and embracing Korean hip-hop as a peculiar and original creative outlet can only be achieved by properly recognizing and understanding its roots. Stay safe, do your research and celebrate black arts. Happy Black History Month.